Colleagues, um, we've had a pretty emotional day. Uh, the country has suffered uh, another extraordinary loss. Uh, but I feel and felt that it was critically important that we also raise uh, mics to talk about an issue uh, that has been a significant problem in our nation for decades that has again come to light with a great uh, sense of consciousness raising and uh, energizing people to speak out. And I think it's critically important that as we're talking about the need in this country to replace hate and fear and violence with love and compassion and empathy and respect, which is who we believe we are as a nation, as who we uh, uh, ascribe to be, to, to uh, that kind of sense of goodness and justice and equality that, that are the standard bearers of what we believe this nation to be. I cannot help uh, but ask that we uh, identify and recognize and spend a little time on the very significant issue and outrage generated last week by the sentencing of a uh, Stanford student uh, in a rape case and the uh, sentencing, the six month sentence that the perpetrator, the convicted felon, received and the outrage that this has generated uh, throughout our community, throughout our state, and indeed throughout our nation. Uh, this is not a new situation, but the time has, I believe, come for us to launch an important and long overdue conversation about sexual assault and rape. Rape. Emily Doe, the anonymous rape victim, has written an extraordinarily eloquent and powerful victim impact statement that I encourage everyone to read. There is no one who can speak more eloquently to the costs and devastation of rape than the victim herself. Victims are often silenced and far too often dismissed. Well, not today. Today, the women of the Senate refuse to participate in that silencing, and we are joined by some of our women colleagues from the Assembly. Today, we want to honor this victim, her courage, her eloquence, her passion, her message on this Senate floor by letting her voice be heard. Senator Bates. Senator Bates, you're recognized. Thank you, Madam President and members. Uh, let me begin uh, with a victim statement. Your Honor, if it is all right for the majority of this statement, I would like to address the defendant directly. You don't know me, but you've been inside me, and that's why we're here today. On January 17th, 2015, it was a quiet Saturday night at home. My dad made some dinner, and I sat at the table with my younger sister, who was visiting for the weekend. I was working full time and was approaching my bedtime. I planned to stay at home by myself, watch some TV and read while she went to a party with her friends. Then I decided it was my only night with her. I had nothing better to do, so why not? There's a dumb party 10 minutes from my house. I would go, dance like a fool, and embarrass my younger sister. So after we, we were brought down to the station, I tried to put it out of my mind, but it was so heavy. I didn't talk. I didn't eat. I didn't sleep. I didn't interact with anyone. After work, I would drive to a secluded place to scream. I didn't talk. I didn't eat. I didn't sleep. I didn't interact with anyone. And I became isolated from the ones I loved most. For over a week after the incident, I didn't get any calls or updates about that night or what happened to me. The only symbol that proved that it hadn't just been a bad dream was the sweatshirt from the hospital in my drawer. Senator Galgiani. And then at the bottom of the article, after I learned about the graphic details of my own sexual assault, the article listed his swimming times. She was found breathing, unresponsive, with her underwear six inches away from her bare stomach, 
curled in a fetal position. By the way, he's really good at swimming. Throw in my mile time if that's what we're doing. I'm good at cooking. Put that in there. I think the end is where you list your extracurriculars to counsel out all the sickening things that have happened to you. Senator Hancock. I was not only told that I was assaulted, I was told that because I couldn't remember, I technically could not prove it was unwanted. And that distorted me, damaged me, almost broke me. It's the saddest type of confusion to be told that I was assaulted and raped blatantly out in the open, but we don't know if it counts as assault. I had to fight for an entire year to make it clear that there was something wrong with this. Senator Leva. No one can talk me out of the hurt he caused me. Worst of all, I was warned because he now knows you don't remember. He is going to get to write the script. He can say whatever he wants and no one can contest it. I had no power. I had no voice. I was defenseless. My memory loss would be used against me. My testimony was weak, was incomplete, and I was made to believe that perhaps I am not enough to win this. His attorney constantly reminded the jury, the only one we can believe is Brock, because she doesn't remember. That helplessness was traumatizing. Senator Liu. You made me a victim. In newspapers, my name was unconscious intoxicated woman. 10 syllables and nothing more than that. For a while, I believed that that was all I was. I had to force myself to relearn my name, my real name, my identity, to relearn that this is not all that I am, that I was not just a drunk victim at a frat party found behind a dumpster while you all are the all-American swimmer at a top university, innocent until proven guilty with so much at stake. I am a human being who had been irreversibly hurt. My life was put on hold for over a year, waiting to figure out if I was worth something. Senator Nguyen. To sit under oath and inform all of us that yes, I wanted it, yes, I permitted it, and that you are the true victim attacked by Swedes for reasons unknown to you is appalling, is demented, is selfish, is damaging. It is enough to be suffering. It is another thing to have someone ruthlessly working to diminish the gravity of validity of this suffering. Senator Pavley. He has done irreversible damage to me and my family during the trial, and we have sat silently, listening to him shape the evening. But in the end, his unsupported statements and his attorney's twisted logic fooled no one. The truth won. The truth spoke for itself. You are guilty. Twelve jurors convicted you guilty of three felony counts beyond reasonable doubt. That's 12 votes per count, 36 yeses confirming guilt. That's 100 percent unanimous guilt. Senator Walk. You cannot give me back my sleepless nights, the way I have broken down sobbing uncontrollably if I'm watching a movie and a woman is harmed. To say it lightly, this experience has expanded my empathy for other victims. I have lost weight from stress. When people would comment, I told them I've been running a lot lately. I've lost weight from stress. There are times I did not want to be touched. I have to relearn that I am not fragile. I am capable. I am wholesome, not just livid and weak. Senator Jackson. And finally, to girls everywhere, I am with you. On nights when you feel alone, I am with you. When people doubt or dismiss you, I am with you. I fought every day for you, so never stop fighting. I believe you. As the author Anne Lamott once wrote, lighthouses don't go running over an island looking for boats to save. They just stand there shining. Although I can't save every boat, I hope that by speaking today, you absorbed a small amount of light, 
a small knowing that you can't be silenced, a small satisfaction that justice was served, a small assurance that we are getting somewhere, and a big, big knowing that you are important. Unquestionably, you are untouchable, you are beautiful, you are to be valued, respected, undeniably, every minute of every day. You are powerful and nobody can take that away from you. To girls everywhere, I am with you. Thank you. And so to our colleagues and again to thank the members of the assembly, both men and women who are standing with us, standing in solidarity, standing united. This is a moment we must seize to have a discussion that is long overdue about the treatment of women in our society, about the treatment of each other, about the treatment, the lack of compassion, the need for compassion, the need to look at each other with love and respect and dignity, whether we are male or female, LGBT, whether we have our uh, people of color, whether we speak different languages, whether we worship God differently. We are all Americans. We are all human beings. And on behalf of the Legislative Women's Caucus, it is time that we stand strong. We must end the violence. We must end the hate. We must hate the bigotry. We must end the misogyny. It is time for us to move forward and make this the nation that we believe it is to be. And with that, would like to thank the Legislative Women's Caucus for those powerful words. <laughs>